Welcome to Evening Prayer from the parish of St. Leonard's Glapthorne. It's Thursday the 14th of May in Easter season and the feast of St. Matthias the Apostle, chosen by the Eleven to replace Judas Iscariot. Today's readings both concern appearance and reality. In the Old Testament lesson, the prophet and judge Samuel anoints David Israel's experiment with monarchy has not been a success. Saul, chosen by God and anointed by Samuel, has undermined Samuel's religious leadership and disobeyed the Lord's clear command utterly to destroy the Amalekites. As a result, God has rejected Saul's kingship. Samuel is sent by the Lord to find another king from among the sons of Jesse the Bethlehemite. The Lord tells Samuel to lie about the purpose of his visit in order to avoid Saul's vengeance. Samuel is only the instrument of the Lord's choice, which is based on David's true nature. The workings of the Lord's inscrutable, majestic purpose for Israel is beyond even Samuel's discernment. David is anointed. The Lord's Spirit comes mightily upon him and departs from Saul. However, Saul is still king, and this coup will lead to bloody civil war. The passage from Matthew's Gospel is at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus gives warnings which balance the blessings with which the sermon begins. False prophets exemplifying the difference between appearance and reality will be known by their fruit. The gravity of the choice before humankind is spelled out. The apparent security of a house built on sand will not survive the storm of judgment at the end of time. Salvation depends on hearing and acting upon Jesus' words, the foundational rock of faith. As always, there are notes which can be seen on the Glapthorn Church Facebook page, or by following links from the Glapthorn Church website homepage, or today's St Peter's email. <coughs> Evening Prayer Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice, under the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins, and serve thee with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is from the first book of Samuel, chapter 16, verses 1 to 14. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. 
Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammo pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he's keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. Now the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. Here ended the Old Testament lesson. The Magnificat, the Song of Mary. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seed, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The New Testament lesson is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 7, verses 15 to 27. Jesus said, Beware of false prophets, who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistles? In the same way, every good tree bears fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will know them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many deeds of power in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Go away from you, from me, you evildoers. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, but it did not fall, because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these 
of words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was its fall. Here endeth the New Testament lesson. The Nunc Dimittis, the Song of Simeon. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Collect of the Day O Almighty God, who into the place of the traitor Judas didst choose thy faithful servant Matthias to be of the number of the twelve apostles, grant that thy church, being always preserved from false apostles, may be ordered and guided by faithful and true pastors. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for Peace O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. The Collect for Aid Against All Perils Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. A 17th century prayer of Saint Dimitri of Rostov. Come, my light, and illuminate my darkness. Come, my life, and revive me from death. Come, my physician, and heal my wounds. Come, flame of divine love, and burn up the thorns of my sins kindling my heart with the flame of thy love. Come, my King, sit upon the throne of my heart and reign there. For thou alone art my King and my Lord. Amen. And now a time of private prayer, when we can bring to God anything that we're worried about, those things for which we should be grateful anyone known to us who especially needs our prayers, and also to pray for ourselves. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore.
Amen.